Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm testing a bit of a different kind of laptop. This right here is a 2008 13-inch MacBook. This MacBook is a 2.4 GHz early 2008 model and it was released in February of 2008 and at launch it used to cost around $1300. This model comes with a Core 2 Duo Mobile T8300, 4GB of RAM, a 160GB hard drive, and Intel GMA X3100 graphics which power the 1280x800 13.3 inch TFT display. Let's find out what this 15 year old Mac can still do. Alright, I got this MacBook back in October of 2021 as a almost completely broken example. Everything on this MacBook was broken, except for the motherboard. So, a couple of weeks later, I managed to find a donor machine which had a broken motherboard. Swapping both boards around, I had this completely working example, and a completely broken one. Sadly, I've lost all footage from repairing this MacBook, but I do have videos of what happened to the donor machine, as I had to get rid of that MacBook since I had to move. Then it was time to clean this MacBook up. After sitting in my closet for over a year, some marks accumulated on the top, but I could clean them right off. Now, let's see what this MacBook does. Plugging in the MagSafe charger, a green light turns on on the charger, and after pressing the power button, this machine started booting into macOS. Sadly, macOS 10.6.8 is not all that well supported these days, and Apple prevents you from installing a more recent version of macOS. So, for this review, I'll first be reviewing this MacBook running on Windows, and for things that won't work on Windows, I'll be coming back to them on macOS at the end of the video, so this laptop can get a fair shot. Time to take out the SSD containing macOS, and while I'm at it, I could upgrade the installed 3GB of RAM to 4GB. Now, let's install Windows. Installing Windows went well, and after some time, I had this MacBook running Windows. Since Windows 10 is supported by most, if not all, modern programs, installing programs went well, and no programs that I wanted to install could not be installed. Now it's time to start using Word on this MacBook. For some light text editing, this laptop is still perfectly usable, even when running Windows 10. This right here is the keyboard on this MacBook. This keyboard feels good, and the keys have enough travel and are spaced apart enough. This is how the keyboard sounds. The function keys do not work in Windows 10, so I'll take a look at them later on in the video. This MacBook has a built-in light for the caps lock key. This right here is the touchpad on this MacBook. From my personal experience, the touchpad is just a little bit too far to the left, causing the cursor to sometimes jump around to a different part of the text while I'm writing a document. The touchpad itself is pretty comfortable to use, and the mouse button also feels satisfying to press. So overall, this touchpad is pretty good. Now it's time to test out some YouTube. Sadly, YouTube was basically unwatchable, struggling at even the lowest resolution. Due to driver issues, the speakers did not work on the Windows 10, so I'll review the speakers later on in the video. The same goes for the webcam. I'll review the webcam later on. Let's have a look at the ports on this laptop. On the left side, you can find the MagSafe charging port, a LAN port, a mini DVI port, a FireWire port, two USB ports, 3.5mm jacks for audio in and out, and an opening for a lock. On the front you can find a status LED and a IR receiver. On the right side you can find the DVD player, and on the back of this MacBook it has no ports. Now it's time to test out some games. Starting off with Minecraft, Minecraft would sadly not launch. The same goes for Roblox. Roblox would also not launch, given an error about an out-of-date launcher, even after reinstalling. 
Moving on to Euro Truck Simulator 2, this game would actually launch, but it got stuck in the loading screen. And last off, BeamNG Drive would not launch due to DirectX compatibility issues. I then went on to testing out the mic. The microphone is located at the top next to the webcam. This is how the microphone sounds. Alright, this is the microphone test of the 2008 MacBook. I don't know how this microphone sounds, but I'm having pretty high hopes for it due to it being in a pretty high-end laptop. Now reviewing the fan noise, I could for some weird reason not get the fan to rev up while running Windows, so I can only review the idling fan noise. In idle, this laptop is basically silent, so that's quite good. This is how it sounds in idle. Then it was time to shut down Windows, and now I'm going to run the same tests on macOS, since reviewing this MacBook without letting it run its actual OS is not really too fair in my opinion. Let's take out the SSD containing Windows, and swap it out for the SSD with macOS on it. Now, booting into macOS, it feels a lot smoother, and everything on this MacBook works right off the bat. Let's install some programs. There were quite a lot of programs that I couldn't install due to the outdated macOS version, but I'll try my best to review this MacBook. The function keys are working now. This MacBook has function keys for brightness, switching tasks, opening the control center, media controls, and volume controls. Since the speakers work, I of course tested them out as well. On macOS, YouTube was actually watchable up to 360p, so I was able to use YouTube for the speaker test. This is how the speakers sound. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon S1 and Adreno 200 graphics. It has 160 megabytes of storage, 384 megabytes of RAM, a 3.15 megapixel camera, and it has a 240... And the webcam also worked. Like you can see, the resolution and overall video quality is very poor. I could now also get the fan to rev up to the max. This is how the fan sounds at full speed. And with that, it's time to shut this MacBook down and give my final opinion. What do I think of it? In my opinion, this MacBook is not usable anymore. The macOS version that it runs is too old to use, and when you run Windows 10 on this MacBook, it feels like a lot of things just don't work. It's a real shame though, as the CPU powering this MacBook is still quite decent and would do pretty good in a Windows laptop. There's a lot of good things about this laptop too, like the keyboard, screen and the cooling performance. But sadly everything is just hindered by the outdated macOS version and the inability to run Windows. So if you are thinking about purchasing this MacBook for day to day use, I would not recommend it. I would much more recommend buying a Windows laptop for about the same price that you could purchase one of these for. Of course if you are a collector or you just like the design of this laptop, like me, there's nothing wrong with picking one of these MacBooks up as they are very good looking machines overall. And with that, this video comes to an end. Thanks so much for watching, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!